I'm here with Dr. Detlev Breyer with Premium Eyes in Dusseldorf, Germany. Dr. Breyer, thanks for joining us. Uh, more than a pleasure. Enhanced monofocal technology is getting a lot of interest at this moment. Tell me about your experience with enhanced monofocal IOLs. I'm myself a very big fan. Why is it? I started 13 years ago uh, with segmental lead of IOL and I was traveling around the world to present my scientific results. Uh, and along this way, I really experienced how much more happy my patients were in comparison to monofocal IOL and how much they enjoyed their freedom from glasses for far and intermediate, uh, only still depending on readers. But of course, the next logical step was to try mini monovision and uh, later real monovision, which we coined as blended vision or the digital formula uh, in the conferences in accordance with the IOL producing company. On the other hand, the disadvantage, of course, of uh, this La formula was that it was called a three-month surgery because neuroadaption needed three months. But the big advantage uh, was that the patients even did not re need uh, readers anymore. So spectacle freedom uh, was invented as with the multifocal IOLs, but without the multifocal IOL inherent problems like photopic phenomena. So since then, uh, I've implanted all EDOF IOLs on the market, uh, and I, by, I, by the way, uh, use the principle of blended vision on my own eyes when I got presbyopic. Well, that is the most ringing endorsement there is if, if you have advanced technology in your eye. I understand that you have some experience with Ray-1 EMV, which is a very particular enhanced monofocal IOL. Can you talk to me about the optics of Ray-1 EMV? It's non-diffractive, with the diffractive, which I think is very important, uh, with a positive spherical aberration design that is intended for a defocus of 1.5 diopters, and the resulting optical tail provides a natural range of vision and a much smoother transition between far and near. So I would say there is only gain, no pain. Uh, the patients are able to see far, intermediate, up to PC distance, and only need readers to read a book. Uh, on the other hand, I read that 30% even have a functional reading vision according to Graham Barrett's data. Um, that means they can use their mobiles without readers or read the menu in the restaurant. And all this without suffering from topic phenomena as in trifocal or diffractive multifocal uh, IOLs. And that also means that they're not suffering from a loss in contrast vision. Um, I think that's uh, really a big advantage. And with this design, we know we can also apply, uh, for example, the monovision or digital formula. So that way patients can even uh, read a book or a newspaper in bad light conditions. I want to hear more about outcomes after using Ray-1 EMV. What have been your observed outcomes in the clinic and what have been your patients' responses? Um, I usually offer those premium IOLs with flex together, um, so femtosecond laser cataract surgery. Uh, for those patients, especially who ask for spectacle uh, freedom. And um, I, I usually do not offer an IOL. Um, I offer vision and spectacle freedom. And I offer advantages and disadvantages in vision because this is what a patient can understand. Um, I only go into details if patients, like engineers or physicists, uh, ask for it. Um, that's how I, how I offer this uh, EDOF IOL and how I position it and how I market it uh, to the patient. And how have your patients responded post-surgically? Are they satisfied with their results? Um, absolutely. And that's what I said. I'm really surprised how from the beginning it worked perfectly well and that the patients were really happy. Uh, especially in my case, when I use it at uh, Dusseldorf Formula or Monovision, because they nearly never use glasses anymore, uh, but for reading small print. And imagine you have all those benefits without halo and glare, no loss of contrast sensitivity, and quite a natural vision after the neuroadaption uh, phase. So at least in my clinical experience now, doing this over 13 years, uh, what else can you ask for? It's, uh, for me, it's better than a uh, multifocal IOL 
especially in those patients who still drive cars uh, at nighttime. And that's why I applied the same optical principle in my eyes. As we wrap up our discussion today, I'm curious if you have any advice or any pearls for new users of Ray One EMV. What would you tell your colleagues who are considering using this technology? Um, as, as anything in life, uh, use it wisely. Um, it is perhaps sometimes storytelling tell, is uh, interesting. Uh, there's a funny story with a patient. Uh, whenever I start to use a new IOL, I implant this IOL for free and don't tell the patients about all the potential benefits. And then I do the defocus course, I ask the patients, and I was seeing this patient after three months after the new redemption time for the first time again. And he was com complaining about the fact that he can see now everything without glasses. And I said, uh, so what, is that a problem? Uh, you should be happy. And he's, yeah, but my wife says she's so used to see me with my glasses. She does not like me without glasses. So I tried to joke with him and I asked, are you rich? And he said, ah, he replied, yes or less. So uh, maybe uh, she's uh, looking for a reason for a golden uh, farewell handshake. Uh, so um, <laughs> he was of course amused and I, I just uh, prescribed him glasses with no correction. Uh, and as much as I know, he's still married. Um, so I think that's the main idea behind the story is, um, under promise, uh, overperform. That is something I would uh, advise uh, every beginner not to be too enthusiastic and not um, to communicate it to the patient, but first start uh, to collect experience. Uh, and then I think um, you have an excellent uh, IOL. Um, and another wise might be see one, order one, uh, and do one. Um, but always keep in mind, never overpromise uh, and underperform. Very well. Dr. Breyer, thanks for joining us today. More than a pleasure. Thank you.